I was gonna drop this video yesterday, but I had a bunch of stuff going on, ma mainly with my main channel, Geekdom 101. I was working real hard on some videos coming out, but, but I wanted to give my thoughts on the announcement that starting in October, WWE Monday Night Raw is going back to two hours. Now, I consider this a pretty interesting announcement. This is all basically USA Network's uh, idea. I'm not sure why they would take an hour off of Raw considering that Raw is one of their most watched shows. And even though the ad revenue might not be what it would be with other shows because wrestling ad revenue doesn't really pay that well for sponsors. But, um, the, uh, but, but they're going to cut Raw down to two hours and SmackDown is starting on USA this week. So... All WWE shows are going to be on USA Network, Raw, SmackDown, and NXT um, for the foreseeable, well, for the very brief future because next month, uh, NXT is going to the CW Network and then in January, Raw is going to Netflix. But WWE made a deal with USA to keep Raw for an extra four months so or three months, but it's been, being cut down to two hours. First of all, I want to say that I'm very happy to hear this and I'm going to tell you why. As much as... I love wrestling. Raw, when it went to three hours every single week, a lot of times became a chore. Obviously, obviously a lot of this was Vince McMahon's booking uh, and a lot of this was the fact that they had to pad out the show because three hours is a long time. You know, back during the boom period, Raw was a two-hour show. Raw started off as a one-hour show until 1997 when it went to two hours and that's to compete with Nitro. Two hours to me is is plenty of time for a solid wrestling show. Plenty, plenty of time. And it's going to eliminate a lot of the filler and a lot of the gaga. I will admit this to you though, guys. As much as I really, really like Triple H's era of WWE compared to Vince. I did a video a few days ago where I'm criticizing some of Triple H's mistakes in my view. I still think he's better than Vince McMahon as a booker. At least the current Vince McMahon. You know, the one from the last 10 years. When Raw went to three hours in 2012, man, these shows, some of these shows dragged. But even the Triple H era, some of the shows still dragged. Like, it's still a lot of content to fill. Now, there is a drawback to the show going back to two hours. Um, there is a drawback to it, and I'll get to it here in a minute. But I will say that before 2012... Raw was a two-hour show, and the only three-hour episodes were the special episodes like the WWE Draft, the old-school Raws, the anniversary episodes, and those shows felt special. Like, I used to be at work, right? And if it was Monday before a three-hour Raw, I would actually be excited because it's a three-hour special episode, and... um. It was cool, like it was it was exciting, and it was usually for a reason, because they would pack those shows, but when it became three hours every week, man, the show really started to drag. I mean, there are some painful episodes of Raw, especially in 2020 and 2021, but there is one drawback. I will, I am, I will tell you that I am perfectly fine with this show being two hours. There is a drawback, though, and that is that that extra hour of Raw usually showcase talent that isn't necessarily headline talent. Let me explain to you what I mean. If you look at Triple H's pattern of booking for the past year or so, you'll notice that some guys always end up on the... Well, not always, but there are guys that Triple H has that are on the pay-per-views. Then you have a, a group of guys that will never make the pay-per-views and are only having like raw feuds. For example, the Wyatt Six... The Wyatt Six is an act that you only see on Raw. You don't see them on pay-per-views. Same thing with um, uh, Karrion Cross and The New Day. That feud has been a Monday Night Raw feud that you don't see on the pay-per-views. Bronson Reed and Braun Strowman, that's like a Raw feud. Triple H does that. There's a group of people that only feud on Raw and don't have blow-offs at the pay-per-views, whereas in the past, all of the feuds on Raw would have blow-offs when you had more than five matches on a pay-per-view. But now that there's only five matches on a pay-per-view, you have a lot less room to fill with these blow-offs. And I understand the strategy, but it's also kind of weird, you know, because it's not something that was normally done. Even back before the era of, like, live Monday night television in the territory days, in those days, you had it to where the matches on TV and the feuds would build up to the house shows. So the house shows, 
the local house shows or the big house shows like Madison Square Garden or whatever the arena was for the territory. Like, because every territory had their own like special arena, the Sportatorium, the Omni, the the Mid South Coliseum. Every stadium had, or every uh, company had their own arena or stadium they would run on special occasion for the big, big, big super cards like your WrestleManias, even though it was before WrestleMania. I'm using that as an example. Uh, showdown at Shea Stadium in 1980. That was WrestleMania before WrestleMania. Big stadium show in Shea Stadium highlighting some of the biggest blood feuds in the company. That's what it's for. It's the big, big show. So if you take that hour away, what's going to happen is a lot of those guys that are TV-only wrestlers might not get as much TV time anymore. Now, apparently when they go to Netflix next year, they're going to be back on at three hours, even though with Netflix, it is not a television network like other things, they could actually do whatever they want because Netflix streaming has sort of different rules, especially when it comes to sports. I mean, look at what Peacock did with the Olympics. And what I mean by that is on Netflix, shows can run as long as need be. So if there's a Raw that only has three hours of content, maybe Netflix will only have it for three hours. Or if it's a Raw that has three hours and 15 minutes or two hours and 45 minutes. You know, uh, the contract for Netflix, I don't have access to it, but Netflix has the ability to sort of give WWE more leverage and more elbow room to, to book their shows. So one of two things is going to happen. Either those talents that are TV-only guys, like Karrion Cross, The New Day, um, the, the former Alpha Academy, like those TV-only guys, they are probably going to maybe lose some TV time. They're going to maybe lose TV time or have it greatly shortened. Or what will happen is they'll make the shows a lot tighter. The matches will be shorter and it'll be sort of like a three-hour show crammed into a two-hour show. I don't think they're going to do that. I'm not certain for sure they're going to do that. But it just it's a bummer because what I hope is that I hope this doesn't lead to a bunch of releases because... The talent who's only on TV, they might not be the, ch the talent that Triple H is spotlighting at the current moment, like Cody Rhodes is getting the spotlight, Rhea Ripley. These talents are going to be on their pay-per-views over and over again, their PLEs. But those guys, you know, they, they, they usually don't end up on pay-per-view, but what's going to happen? Are they going to tighten the show? I actually do hope that we get more shorter matches on Raw, with the exception of once in a while throw in like a longer match like a real lengthy match to, um, you know, just, just to change things up a little bit. You know, I'm not saying you have to go back to Crash TV from the Attitude Era, but I would like it if, if the shows were tightened a bit. Although, as a fan, I'd like it if the pay-per-views had more than five matches. I mean, I, I, uh, I think, I'm not saying, look, five matches to me, it doesn't make me hate the shows, but going to the shows, which are more expensive now, than they ever have been, you know, and only getting five matches. I don't know. I feel like pay-per-views, even the B-shows, should be maybe six or seven matches, and then the the bigger ones, like the, the Royal Rumbles and WrestleMania. Well, Royal Rumble's going to have two Rumble matches, so that's an hour long, but I think six or seven matches is fine for a regular PLE. You don't have to do 15 like AEW. You know what I mean? But I will say this. And this is me being objectively as a fan. AEW does give you more bang for your buck on the pay-per-views. Usually, you know, you if you get an AEW pay-per-view, you're guaranteed to have a lot of action and a lot of excitement. And that's one thing that Tony Khan can hang his hat on, that his pay-per-views are solid. And uh, although sometimes it can go too long, especially on school nights and work nights for a lot of people. But um, again, there's pros and cons to everything. So those are my thoughts on Raw going to three hours. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Oh, going to two hours. Oh, let me know in the comments down below. Have a great one. See you in the next video.